أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والمحصنات من النساء إلا ما ملكت أيمانكم كتاب الله عليكم وأحل لكم ما وراء ذلكم أن تبتغوا بأموالكم أن تبتغوا بأموالكم محصنين غير مسافحين فما استمتعتم به منهن فآتوهن أجورهن فريضة ولا جناح عليكم فيما تراضيتم به من بعد الفريضة إن الله كان عليما حكيما ومن لم يستطع منكم طولا أن ينكح المحصنات أن ينكح المحصنات المؤمنات فمما ملكت أيمانكم من فتياتكم المؤمنات والله أعلم بإيمانكم بعضكم من بعض فانكحوهن بإذن أهلهن وآتوهن أجورهن بالمعروف محصنات غير مسافحات محصنات غير مسافحات ولا متخذات أخدات ولا متخذات أخدان فإذا أحصن فإن أتين بفاحشة فعليهن نص ما على المحصنات من العذاب ذلك لمن خشي العنة منكم وأن تصبروا خير لكم والله غفور رحيم يريد الله ليبين لكم ويهديكم سنن الذين من قبلكم ويتوب عليكم والله عليم حكيم إن الحمد لله ونستعينه ونستهديه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا وسيئات أعمالنا من يهدي الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا وحبيبنا محمدا عبد الله ورسوله لا نبي بعده اللهم فصل وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين Brothers and sisters, today we are going to summarize Juz number 5 of the Holy Quran, inshallah ta'ala. And Juz number 5 comprises of ayat from Surat An-Nisa from verse number 24 to verse number 147. But let me begin by saying that Surah An-Nisa is the, th the third largest surah in the Quran. 
Surat Al-Baqarah, Surat Ali Imran, and then Surat An-Nisa. Surat An-Nisa is Makkiya. It was revealed. Revealed Madaniya. It, it means what's revealed in Madina. And it is named An-Nisa because the first 35 verses, the first 35, from first number one until 35, I mainly talk about women and family. Now, the first thing came to our mind in reading Surah Al Nisa, and it just came to my mind that it basically presents to us the real nature of our deen. Al Islam is not only a religion. In a sense, Islam is only dealing with ritual issues. But again, Islam is a complete way of life. It is a code of way, way of life. It is a guidance for humans life to live their life with dignity, with honor, and respectfully. And here in this surah, Surah Al-Baqarah, it covers issues about life in a wide range. So Alhamdulillah, the first thing that we have to remember by reading Surah Al-Nisa, that we have to understand our deen is kamilun mutakamilun. It is a unifying concept and cannot be separated from one aspect to another aspect. It, the aspects are interconnected. What does it mean? It means that when Islam talks about Salat, it is not only about Salat, but it is related to our human character. Why? Because inna salata tanha anil fashya'i wal munkar. The Salat is prohibited from bad and anything that is against the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Unfortunately, some people are trying to accept some portion of Islam and to reject some portion of Islam. And that's why there's an ayah in Surah An-Nisa itself, verse 150. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna alladhina yakfuruna billah wa rusulih wa yuriduna an yufarriqa bayna Allahi wa rusulih it is not a part of use number four. It is part of use number five. It has already a part of use number six. But yes, I wanted to underline that Surah An-Nisa is emphasizing on the nature of the deen being as the complete code of life. This is the first point that we have to understand. Now, brothers and sisters, the whole idea of Surah An-Nisa is about ethical foundation. It is about ethical foundations of the society, or you can say in this way, Surah An-Nisa lays down the foundation of the societal life in Al-Islam. And that's why it is surely Surah Madani because it talks about issues in Medina. It talks about private and public life at the same time. It talks about family life, it talks about marriage, it talks about children, and it talks about inheritance, al-mirath. The surah also is talking about the struggle between the truth and the falsehood, between the prophet and those who rebelled against him in Medina, among other communities. It talks about Ahlul Kitab. It talks about Mushrikun among the Arabs. But also most dangerously, it talks about the Munafiqun, those who have nifaq, hypocrisy. But also Surah Nisa still talks about social justice and how it is imperative, it is paramount important on this ummah to understand that it is our responsibility to defend the marginalized people in the society.
Sometimes these marginalized people, weak people are screaming for help. And we have to understand that in our Islam, it is our sole responsibility to defend them. Now, brothers and sisters, again, this is not a tafsir. So we are not going to explain ayah by ayah of the surah. But this is an introduction to use number five. And so if I just wanted to underline some points, I would like to underline seven points from use number five of this Surah An-Nisa of the Holy Quran. The first point I would like to underline is about, and I'm going back to the beginning of Surah An-Nisa, is about the family issues. And let me call it family business. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala began Surah An-Nisa by saying, A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem, Ya ayyuha an-nas, ittaqu rabbakum alladhi khalaqakum min nafsin wahida, wa khalaqa minha zawjaha, wa batha minhuma rijalan kathiran wa nisa'a, wa attaqu Allah alladhi tasa'aluna bihi wal arham, inna Allah kana alaykum raqiba. This verse of the Holy Quran emphasizes that Silatul Rahm, or family ties, is a very much a part of our human nature. That we incline to have family. And we are very much attached to our family. And therefore, Ar Rahim is derived from the word Rahmah. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in, in, in Hadith Qudsi says that. And Rahman. So whoever connect the ties, he connect with me, and whoever disconnected the tie, he disconnected with me. And that's why family connection is connected very dearly to our heart. But we have to understand also, and this is a reality in our society, we have to be mind very mindful that family matters is a very much close to fall into different type of fitness as well. So you can find in the, in the society, in the communities, a lot of family members have disputes, frictions, and even sometimes to, to, to a certain extent, there is an animosity happened between family members. Because sometimes when we live together, you know, it is also a very easy way to have disagreement with the members of the family. And for that reason, the Holy Quran gives a very big attention to the regulations concerning our family business. And the Holy Quran, particularly the Surah, Surah Nisa, talk in detail about marriage. From what type of candidate that we are looking for in marriage, it talks very clearly. When you are looking for a candidate to be your spouse in life, or type of a woman, or type of a man, that should be accepted for any marriage proposal. Including a very controversial issue possibly, that is, many people are talking around. And particularly many of our non-Muslim friends, due to some misunderstanding, they deeply misunderstand this concept, including the concept of polygamy in the beginning of Surat An-Nisa. Surat An-Nisa talks about divorce and every regulation that is related to the divorce. And certainly Surat An-Nisa also talk about inheritance. And we have to understand, this is our honesty, that many members, many family members are disputing and even division and friction happen between members of the family because of the inheritance, because of that mirath, al-wirath. So alhamdulillah in the Holy Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us very details and specific in terms of inheritance or inheritance laws. This is the first issue that needs to be dealt in Surat An-Nisa. It's about family matters, family issues. The second point that I would like to underline in this surah 
that this surah is talking about the oneness of human family. And I think this is a very important point to underline because many people, as you are becoming deep into our diversity, in terms of ethnicity, races, skin colors, you are becoming Europeans, African, Middle Eastern, Asians, people, people tend to forget that basically we are all one human family. And that's why again the beginning of Surah Ali Imran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Khalaqakum min nafsin wahida. Allah created you from one single soul. And that is Adam alayhi salatu wa salam. And then Khalaqa min ha zawjaha. Allah created from him, it his spouse. And then, more importantly, وَبَثَّ مِنْ هُمَا رِجَالًا كَثِيرًا وَنِسَاءً Allah, from these, two, from these two individuals, Adam and Hawa, spread a lot humans, male and females, and become ethnicities, become races, now become nationalities, with different types of skin colors, and so on and so forth. But no matter deep diversity that we have still, the Holy Quran emphasized on the importance of taking into consideration the oneness of human family. That we have all we have been all created from Adam, and Adam was created from Turab. Kullukum in Adam wa Adam in Turab. Again, the reason I'm underlining this one, because we see the deep racism that we have in a community at the moment. Alhamdulillah, Muslims, to such an extent, we understand that we are all equals. When you go to the masajid, we can pray together. And we can create lines, straight lines. You don't have to say that this is the black line, that the one is the, wet, the white lines. Alhamdulillah, in our community, we don't have white mosque or black mosque. Mosque belongs to everybody. And every single Muslim, when you come to any mosque, feel that you belong to. Because that house belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In other words, that this ayah also emphasizes on the importance of taking into our mind the genuine human equality. Because we are facing tremendous racism in, this, in, the, in the world today. The rise of white supremacy certainly is racism. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in, in the first ayah of Surah An-Nisa emphasized taqwa. Ya ayuhal nas ittaqu rabbakum. And then what taqullah. Twice Allah mentioned the taqwa. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to tell us that for you to be considered respected, honorable, dignified, then you have the taqullah azza wa jal. And that is the only criterion for us to be unique among all human beings. In Surah Al-Hujurat, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then make it more clear when he says inna akramakum inda Allah yaqaqum then the most noble among us in the sight of Allah, the most righteous ones. Brothers and sisters, this is the second point that I would like to underline from this juice number five. Still in the beginning of Surah An-Nisa, because I think this is a very important to explain. I thought, although I'm sure that this is not truly an answer to many questions raised by many about why then. The issue of polygamy had become a controversial among many communities. And including many Muslims questions about this. But those who have been influenced by some criticism in the name of gender equality sometimes and then we tend to say that this verse of the Holy Quran is not appropriate this is a very sensitive issue no doubt about that and it has been a point of criticism to our deen many people criticize Islam because of this particular point and I would like particularly to underline here today in order to respond to some accusations, particularly to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam followed 
his human desire because he married multiple women. So let me begin by saying that when we talk about any particular teaching, first we must use the context of the mind when it was revealed. So why then the Holy Quran came down to limit polygamy into four? Because the context was the Arab people used to marry unlimitedly, without any limit. So the Holy Quran came down to regulate that. That if that is something to happen, then you have to have certain regulations. Isn't it? A civilized in nature. In time that people have no regulations, in time that people can do whatever they want to do, Quran have come down to regulate, to present a clear regulations. This is number one, the first issue in reference to the issue of polygamy. The next issue is that the issue is not exclusively just in Islam. Because we know the Torah talks about multiple wives of the prophets. Talking about Dawood alayhi salatu wassalam, Sulaiman alayhi salatu wassalam, Ibrahim alayhi salatu wassalam, and others. And not only prophets, the kings of those times married many, many women. In other words, that why then Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam is criticized or was criticized or still criticized and he lived in the 6th century and he was a prophet while others are not criticized. There's not a fair, it's not a justice, a just stand by some. Because people tend to criticize only Islam while others are not. While this issue has been to every teaching. Past kings in Europe, you're talking about European kings. You're talking about African kings. But why then always this issue is a problem only with Islam? Brothers and sisters, I just wanted to say that sometime when we deal with an issue about our religion, there is an unfair, an unfair stand. People are not fair toward our deen and Islam. This is the third issue that I wanted to deal tonight in just number two, number, number five. The next issue that I'd like to deal, and again, I'm not giving tafsir, it is just some issues that is possibly relevant to our time, particularly to, to those of us who live here in the, in the United States or in the Western society. The issue of what Allah says in this juice number five or Surah An-Nisa, Ar-Rijalu Qawamuna Ala nisa that the men, the men are protectors of the women. And sometimes, uh, unfortunately, people mistranslate the word kawamun into that men are dominance of a woman. And I think we have to uh, see very closely what does it mean with kawama in Arabic language. And what is really the meaning of ar-rijalu qawamun ala nisa? First, we have to understand that when the Holy Quran talks about something, the Holy Quran is dealing with the very nature of human beings. So when the Holy Quran says that the men are protectors for the women, that's what the nature of life it is. And let me just be very blatant, be very open here. No matter how educated that woman is, how powerful that woman is, how high that woman in terms of political position, let's say a woman is a president. But when we come to the family life, the woman is still the woman and the man is still the man. And that basically that is the Holy Quran is talking about. That when we come to the relations between man and woman, always man must present himself as the protector for his wife, for the woman. And that's what it is. The Holy Quran is uncover the reality of our nature between the two sexes. 
وَلَيْسَ الذَّكَرَ كَالْأُنْثَى That man is not equal to the woman. It's not same in terms of physical nature, in terms of psychological inclinations. There are many things that we have different between uh, man and woman. And but in this regard, when it comes to the issue of protection, man is presented to be the protector. But without any tendency at all, without any tendency at all, to say that man must be dominant over the woman. And that's what the problem when the people misunderstand the ayah. And that's why always in some, uh, we have to criticize ourselves as Muslims, and some always we say that we are the man, women should listen to us. And we don't give a chance to the women to express themselves. Because we say we are qawam. Qawam doesn't mean that we have to become a dictator of it, our woman. Because brothers and sisters, and we have to understand this so we can talk to our non-Muslim friends, those who tend to misunderstand our faith. When you talk about gender equality, the equality between male and female, and man and woman in Islam, I can, with all, with all confidence, I can say that there is no single teaching that can compete with the teaching of Islam in terms of gender equality. Talk about history of gender equality. From the beginning when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created Adam alayhi salatu wa salam, read Surah Al-Baqarah once again. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to him, O oh Adam, stay you in paradise. You and your wife. He didn't say stay you and take with you your wife. Or be loving and take your wife with you. Have some mercy with your wife, to your wife. But Allah says, stay you and your wife together. There is a, a sense of equality in that express. That you and your wife equally stay in paradise. And then he said, And both of you should eat, enjoy paradise. Equal enjoyment. And this includes everything else. Anything that we may consider enjoyment is equally same to both male and female. There is no difference between the two. In Al-Islam, Alhamdulillah, there are many ayat that represent the genuine equality between male and female. Hunna libasun lakum wa antum libasun lahunna. Your wives are garments for you and you are men garments for the wife. In other words, you are complementing one another. Without the other side, without the woman, men are naked. And without the man, women are naked. Men not perfect. So why wife and husband are perfecting to one another. It is also in Surah Al-Layl. وَاللَّيْلِ إِذَا يَغْشَى وَالنَّهَارِ إِذَا تَجَلَّى وَمَا خَلَكَ الذَّكَرَ وَالْأُنْثَى Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala equates, give an example of man and woman like Layl and Nahar, like Layl, like night and day. That man and woman is just like, you know, day and night. It is a, a unifying body, a unifying concept. They exchange a life, they are helping one another. That's what it is. The Holy Quran makes it that very clearly. Even in some points, we have to say that our sisters are even given more sometimes opportunities by Rasulullah to express themselves and to have more self-confidence and dignity and honor. For example, when he says, Al Jannatu Tahta Aqdamil Ummahat, woman lies under the feet of the mother. It means that for you to enter into paradise that you need to respect and love your mother. Why particularly mother? Because we understand the role of the mother in human's life. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Al-Jannatu Tahta lies under the feet of the mother. A Sahaba came to him, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa and said, Ya Rasulullah, whom should I respect? He said, your mother. He repeated again, whom, and then whom? He said, your mother, and then whom? 
He said, your mother three times. And then the fourth one, he says, your father. That's what it is. Love and respect your mother three times over your father. You know, sometimes I think this personally, and I said, might this might be a kind of discrimination against the man. But then, I took into my mind about the context of the time when Rasulullah said that hadith. Because and in that time, the Arab people did not respect the women at all. They didn't respect the, their mothers. So Rasulullah bring a we call it revolutionary change. They changed the minds of the Arab revolutionary. This is a revolution in change. That now, not only that you have to respect both mother and, and father, even you have to respect your mother more, three times more than your father. So the point here, brothers and sisters, when some of our friends accuse Islam being discriminative towards the woman, I think we must challenge them back. We must study our deen. We must understand our Quran. We must understand the statement, the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu that Alhamdulillah, Islam is so perfect in terms of gender equality, the equality between male and female, Alhamdulillah. The Holy Quran is full about this. So we are not lacking about respecting the women. I'm not talking about the reality in the Muslim world or in the Muslim community. Because when we come to the reality, not only in the Muslim world, but everywhere else, oftentimes women are being discriminated against. They have become sometimes a second class citizen. Has nothing to do with Islam. Because Alhamdulillah, Islam is so beautiful in terms of giving the right to the woman. So this is the fourth issue that I'd like to underline here tonight from Surah An-Nisa. The next one is, in Surah An-Nisa, it also deals with bravery and courage in facing the challenge of life. And it talk about jihad, it talk about hijrah, and all these connected to iman. That without iman, no one can involve in any jihad. And without iman, hijrah never happens in life. And certainly hijrah in the time of Rasulullah is moving from one place to another, and that is from Makkah al mukarramah to Medina al munawwar But nowadays, Muslims are in need of hijrah, with his intention, with his character, from the bad character to the good one. From the character that used to gossiping behind the people to someone who keep honest to his brothers and sisters. This is hijrah. From hij hijrah from sometime lazy to, uh, to perform salat on time, do hijrah bad to do salat on time. That is hijrah. Jihad also. Of course, Surah An-Nisa talk about war, battle. But when we take this into our daily life, jihad is needed every time, every moment. And again, the biggest jihad is the jihad against our own bad tendency, bad desire. And as we are fasting this month, the most important of fasting is al-imsak. I used to say the word imsak is the cheese of the fasting. If you combine the whole issues in fasting, imsak is the cheese. Because only by imsak, we will be able to control ourselves. We will be able to, to control our self from different bad tendencies. Only by imsak, we can control ourselves from being toma, greedy, Become greedy. And how many people are so greedy? This world is being dominated by greed. A tumor. Wars happen. One country attack another country because of the war, because of the mal, wealth. That is greed. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Nazi'at, فَإِذَا جَاءَتِ الطَّامَةُ الْكُبَرَةُ 
يوم يتذكر الإنسان ما سعى وبرزت الجحيم لمن يرى فأما من طغى وآثر الحياة الدنيا فإن الجحيم هي المأوى that many disasters happen in life either it is man-made disasters either like war, terrorism and others or natural disasters happens because of what? because of tuguyan فَأَمَّا مَنْ تَغَى because people transgress the lines Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us hudud barrier, limitations don't go beyond that but we still go beyond why? وَآثَرَ الْحَيَاةَ الدُّنْيَا because of materialistic tendency people are so materialistic and that materialism creates the tendency of consumerism Look at the, when you come to the Thanksgiving, there's called Good Friday. You know, people are fighting in the store to buy something, not because they need it. That is just, a, I'm sorry to say, maybe this is too harsh, but that is a psychological disease, mental disease. Sometimes you don't need it. You have a good TV, a new TV, simply because there is 30% discount, 70% discount, even 90% discount. Even 90% discount, but basically you don't need it because still you have TV at home. Why you have to go to the store to buy TV? That is the disease that we have in our mentality. That is consumerism. Hedonism. Hedonism is we want people to, to see us the best. Best watch, best shoes, best clothing, and everything. So brothers and sisters, this dunya had brought, made us to become tughiyan or tughat, transgressing the lines of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And because of that, فَإِنَّ الْجَحِيمَ هِيَ الْمَأْوَى You see the jahim, jahannam, as the end. And before the real jahannam in the day of judgment, you will see many jahannams here in this life. People are killing one another. Look at what's happening in Yemen these days. Look at what happens in Syria. People are going there in the name of defending the rights of the people, in the name of defending democracy, defending the freedom, but basically in the name of influence, economic purpose. That is materialism. So brothers and sisters, coming back again, we need mujahada and jihad in our life. And Surah An-Nisa teaches us that hijrah and jihad will never happen you cannot do that without Iman, only by Iman, believing in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us about a secret. Why many people fail to do jihad and why many people fail to do hijrah? Fundamental change in life. And the answer to that is because of the nifaq. So Surah Al-Hijrah, uh, Surah Al-Nisa, talks about nifaq in a very deep way. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, A'udhu billahi minash shaitan al-rajim, Inna al-munafiqina yukhadi'oon Allah wa huwa khadi'oon. Wa idha qamu ila salati, qamu qusala. Wa idha qamu ila salati, qamu qusala. يُرَعُونَ النَّاسَ لَا يَذْكُرُونَ اللَّهَ إِلَّا قَلِيلًا And more than that, the next ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, مُذَبْذَبِينَ بَيْنَ ذَلِكَ لَا هَا أُولَاءِ وَلَا إِلَا هَا أُولَاءِ لَا إِلَا هَا أُولَاءِ وَلَا إِلَا هَا أُولَاءِ When you have hypocrisy, when we have that, the disease called nifaq or hypocrisy, that is really the challenge in order for us to establish jihad and hijrah in our life. We are becoming scared sometimes in facing the challenge of life, we become weak. We don't have steadfastness, no istiqamat in life because of that an-nifaq. This was happening in Medina at the time. This was happening in, in Uhud. This was happening in some battlefields with Rasulullah Sallam, the Munafiqun joined Rasulullah Sallam when they saw that the enemies are so powerful, they become so scared and they ran away. They left the Prophet Muhammad Sallam behind to defend himself. 
So the Holy Quran, and we mentioned that in Surah Al-Baqarah, but also here in Surah Al-Nisa, again, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talked lengthy, in a very detailed in manner, about the munafiqun. Because this is really the very dangerous enemies in our society when you have munafiqun, hypocrites, in our society. So this is the point number five that I want to discuss in Surat An-Nisa. Just number five. The next one before the last one. That Surah An-Nisa is also talking about a paramount important issue in humans' life. And that is the issue of justice. The issue of justice. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in that surah, Audhu billahi minash shaytani rajeem, Ya ayuhal ladhina amanu kunu qawamina bil qistu shuhada lillah. Walau ala anfusikum wal walidayni wal aqrabin. All believe, all believers, all those who have faith, you have to establish justice. Even if that justice is against yourselves, against your fathers or parents, even if that justice is against your family members, you have to be just. Justice is equivalent to life itself. What is the meaning of living our life if we don't have justice? And that's why Tawheed is known as the most important justice in life. And shirk is the most dangerous zulm in life. Inna shirka la zulman azim. So we must establish justice. Justice towards our Lord, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, by worshipping Him alone, serving Him, that we, we take our life, every aspect of our life for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that is the justice because He gives you everything that we need in life. Justice towards our parents. ihsana. You have to be dutiful and kind to your parents. Even that you consider your parents are wrong, you can imagine the worst parents. Not only that, that those parents are mushrikun, mushrik, but they also wanted to force you to be mushrik. You can imagine that. The parents wanted to force his kids to be mushrik. The most severe sin in al Islam, shirk. And that parents wanted to, to force his, his kid to be mushrik. You can imagine how worse that parent is. But what the Holy Quran says, وَإِنْ جَاهَدَاكَ عَلَىٰ أَن تُشْرِكَ بِمَا لَيْسَ لَكَ بِهِ عِلْمٍ فَلَا تُطِعْهُمَا فَلَا تُطِعْهُمَا You have to disobey them. Don't commit shirk. If they try, even if they force you to commit shirk. But the Holy Quran follows. What the Holy Quran says, You still to have, you, ha you still have to accompany them with ma'roof, with kindness, with love, with compassion. Because no matter how that parent is, it's still your parent. And that's what the Quran is all about. Justice to our parents. Our parents love us unconditionally. Our parents have given every single thing possible to make us successful in life. They wake up early in the morning, coming back late at night, sweating, bleeding, struggling for, for the kids. And the, the justice is just to be kind to them. We cannot pay them back. The only thing that's love them back, respect them, have compassion, have mercy, have mercy. That is the justice to the parent, justice to the couple, husband and wife, justice to the husband, by the wife, justice to the wife, by the husband. And our kids are also need justice. And the most important justice to our kids is about making sure that inshallah they are going, they are going to be safe in the hellfire. Ya ayuhal ladhina amanu, qu anfusakum wa ahlikum nara. That is the most important justice towards our kids Educate them. Make sure that they, are, they keep believing in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They keep following the teaching of Allah. They keep following the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They know how to read the Holy Quran. They establish five times daily prayer at least. These are our kids. Teach them how to, 
to communicate respectfully to us as parents. That is our justice towards other kids. Justice to all human beings, to our Muslim friends, brothers and sisters, and to our non-Muslim friends. Justice is justice. Now let me just make it sure once again so that we understand. Justice has no limit. There is no such Islamic justice or Christian justice or Jewish justice or Muslim justice, Christian or Jewish justice. Justice is justice. And we must be just to every single servant of Allah, either believers or non-believers. And that's why Rasulullah says, Man adha dhimmiyan fa ana khasmuhu yawm al qiyamah. Whoever insult or whoever afflicts any pain, an, a non Muslim, and a non Muslim, that you insult a non Muslim simply because he's, a, he's not a Muslim. What Rasulullah said, ana khasmuhu yawm al qiyamah. I will be his enemy in the day of judgment. You can imagine, you pray five times daily. You do fasting in Ramadan. You do Qiyam al Tahajjud. You do perform Hajj maybe many times. You do Adhkar, Tasabih, every ritual. But because of our zulm, our injustice, oppression to a non Muslim around us, in the day of judgment, Rasulullah will turn enemy towards us. That is justice in Islam, my brothers and sisters. And that's why at the same time we have to tell our friends around us, our non-Muslims, that inshallah, when we Muslims are in power, either it is political power or economic power, we will never do any unjust to our non-Muslim friends. Because our teaching is very clear. We have to be just to everybody. And that is one of the most essential meaning of وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ and I did not send you, O Muhammad, except as a mercy to all humanity. Muhammad وسلم, is so merciful, compassionate to every Muslim, but also he was still compassionate to every non-Muslim as well in Medina at the time. So Rasulullah But there is an important issue also here concerning justice. And that is what is called in modern term as social justice. And it is about defending the rights of those who marginalize and weak people in our society. Those who are oppressed. We Muslims must be in the front line to defend the rights of those who are weak and marginalized in the society. And we cannot be silent. We cannot keep quiet. When any part of Mus Muslim and non-Muslim even of being marginalized without voicing out our resistance. Injustice is the most important munkar. And anywhere in the world, anytime, you see any injustice to anybody, particularly to those who are weak, to the poor, to those who are weak in the society, marginalized, then we have to voice out our resistance. Our brothers in Palestine, our brothers in Kashmir, our brothers in Rohingya, our brothers in Xinjiang, China, in many places, in different places of the world, Muslims must be in the front line to talk about this. And if you are, if you are still quiet from this, it means you forget yourself as Muslims. And that's why in Surah An-Nisa, Jews number 5, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا لَكُمْ أَلَّا تُقَاتِلُونَ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ What's wrong with you? That you don't fight in the, in the way of Allah. And fighting here is not only by weapons. Yes, if it is necessary, then we have to. If someone wants to kill us, we will say, excuse me, sir, why you want to kill us? Smile to them. But if they insist to kill you, then you have to run away. عنهم, run away. But if they still follow you, then you have to turn your faces and kill back. That is to, to self-defend. That is what fight in Islam is, self-defense in nature.
قَاتِلُوا الَّذِينَ يُقَاتِلُونَكُمْ Fight those who fight you. Islam is very clear. We are not initiating fight because we want peace. Islam is about peace. We don't initiate fight. But if someone is coming to fight us and we try to solve that peacefully, salaman, but they still insist to fight, no other way, no solution but to fight back, then you have to fight back. قَاتِلُوا الَّذِينَ يُقَاتِلُونَكُمْ So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا لَكُمْ لَا تُقَاتِلُونَ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ What is wrong with you that you don't fight in the way of Allah? وَالْمُسْتَضْعَفِينَ And the weak from among the people and the women and the children, or they're all crying, looking for help. Even they say, please do give, me, give us a way out from this village. You can imagine those brothers in in Burma at that time, you know, being tortured, you know, you can imagine the way that they're being tortured. They wanted to run away, but they don't have any means to run away. They wanted to go to different countries. They don't have nationality, no passport. The Rohingya brothers and sisters, till now, they don't have nationality. And we are Muslims still silent, particularly the governments. The Muslim governments are still silent. And if you feel that you are Muslims, and if you feel that you have Iman, then you have to have this sense of social justice. This is the sixth point from use number five. The last point I'd like to mention tonight, brothers and sisters, because of the time, and as we are approaching iftar, it's a good time to make dhikr, it's a good time to make dua, make dua for all of us. Make dua for your brothers who are sick in the hospitals. Make dua that may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala take away this pandemic. That may take away this challenge, COVID-19. So let me go to the last point. The last point that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in Surah An-Nisa, Jews number 5, is two important issues. Two important um opposition to our Iman, the enemy of Iman. Number one is shirk, and number two is nifaq. A shirk is associating Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in worship with some others. And nifaq is hypocrisy in the heart. Now, I just wanted to say that these are the most dangerous disease, sickness, in the religion. Number one is shirk, and number two is nifaqun, that is hypocrisy. About the shirk, Allah mentioned in Surah An-Nisa, إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَغْفِرُ أَنْ يُشْرَكَ بِهِ وَيَغْفِرُ دُونَ ذَلِكَ لِمَنْ يَشَاءُ Indeed, verily, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not forgiving the sin of shirk, the shirk. And Allah forgives every other sins whom he will. The question is, how about if someone committed shirk and then before his death, he embraced Al-Islam. Alhamdulillah, he embraced Islam. It means the shirk is erased. The sin of shirk is erased by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And subhanAllah, there is no more important mercy than someone who was shirk, who was mushrik, committed shirk all his lifetime and at the end of his life, he embraced Al-Islam, declaring La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah Sallallahu And we have that like the father of our, our Sheikh, our Imam, our brother, Imam Ayyub Abdul Baqi, and the mother of Imam Ayyub Abdul Baqi in New York. We know that um, Green Dean, uh, one of the brothers in UK, his father embraced Islam at the end, the very end of his life, subhanAllah. You know, that is the mercy of Allah. That is truly the mercy of Allah. Because only someone into, into Jannah only by the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You can imagine committed shirk the whole life. But at the end of the life, he declared, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. Allah forgave his sins. But those who die, those who die, he didn't embrace Tawheed before his death. No forgiveness at all. In Allah alayhi fura ayyushraka bi. Indeed, Allah will never forgive the one who dies on the state of being mushrik. It's very clear. 
And the second one, an nifaq. What Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, in al munafiqina fi dartil asfal min al nar. That is also mentioned in juz number five. That the munafiqun will be in the lowest of the law in Jahannam. Why? Because nifaq is the most dangerous disease, the most dangerous ill, and the most dangerous enemy of ours in the community. Many friction, many problems happen between the Muslim community because of the tendency of being munafiq in our society. So my brothers and sisters, these are six point, important points from Surah uh, An-Nisa, just number two, number five of the Holy Quran. Inshallah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from all of us. Don't forget to finish it, read it, one juice every day, inshallah, at least. If you can read more than one juice every day, alhamdulillah, but at least one day. You can do it, brothers and sisters, alhamdulillah. It doesn't take you 40 minutes, one hour to read the Holy Quran, one juice. You know, we are staying home. What is the reason to say I don't have time? You know, just reading once, one juice every day. Try it as much as you can. Read it with tajweed with makhraj, if it's possible, with some meaning, understand the meaning, inshallah Allah will bless us, because this is the shahr al-Qur'an. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from all of us, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shower his mercy upon all of us. Uh, at the end of the day, we pray once again for our brothers who are sick, that may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, with his mercy, with his love and compassion, with his miracle, miracle, mu'iza, with his power, that inshallah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cure those who are sick in the hospitals and those who are sick in, at home also. And those who died on Islam and Iman, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept him as shuhada. And for all of us, may Allah protect us brothers and sisters. Keep healthy. Keep your health. Keep safe inshallah. Tie your camel. Do every possible way to protect yourself and have trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. By having trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we are going to have peace in mind inshallah and we can rest. And if we can, we can rest well, inshallah, we can have a good immune system in our body. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us and keep us. Aqulu qali hadha wa sallifu Allah. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.